Y'all, it's the time of the year where people are often doing canning, preserving, freezing, things like that. So I am jumping on the bandwagon just a little bit this year. I don't have a lot of room for a lot of storage for canned goods. Florida doesn't lend itself well to that because there's no basements here. However, I do have room for a little bit and I was kind of in the mood to do it, so here we are. I'm going to be making some applesauce that and some green beans and possibly something else yet i'm not sure what all the video is going to hold but i wanted to take you guys with me so i'll talk about some things as the video progresses and i'm doing this over a number of days so it's not all done in the same day but uh, little amounts it's not as overwhelming and yeah i'm excited hopefully you guys will enjoy it i know this is not a, just a super typical video that i do but it is something that i'm doing right now and i've gotten requests for different things and such so i thought i would film it and hopefully you will enjoy it and find it helpful. So mom is coming over this morning to help me do a little tiny batch of applesauce. I haven't done any in a really long time. We don't eat a whole lot, but I grew up eating applesauce with pretty much every meal, maybe not breakfast, but you get the point. So we used to do bushels of apples growing up, like once a year be a big apple day and we'd make a bunch of applesauce. And mom had the Victorio strainer that she uses for that makes it so easy. The only thing is here, I can't get the apples that I normally would have gotten in Ohio. So I just picked up like half a box of Golden Delicious. So I've got my apples here and I'm gonna quarter them and put them in water just so they don't turn brown before we're ready to cook them. You do not have to cut out any seeds or anything. That's the beauty of a Victorio strainer is it takes all of the gunk out for you. I love my little paring knives. These are Victorian Ox knives. They're serrated, which makes a huge difference. So I'll try to link these. Mom's on her way and I had these quartered up and I put just a little bit of water in the bottom. Don't put too much, otherwise it's gonna be super runny. And then you're just gonna cook them on the stove until they're soft. We're gonna put some sugar in just to keep it from maybe turning brown. Even if we weren't terribly familiar with how these apples were gonna be um, because we usually used, mom was saying we used ginger gold. It's a little sweeter than some of them but they have a little bit of tartness too, which we always liked. The ginger gold, yeah. you're saying. Yeah. And they would turn out a lot, um, not near as thick. They'd be more they runny. freeze it. So, but, so yeah, we're gonna can them, I think, cause she wasn't sure how they would do frozen. It might be okay, but we're gonna just can them, even though it's a really small batch. Um, I think I'm gonna do them that way. I wanted to show you some lids that I'm gonna be using. Um, these are the superb lids. I've actually shown them, I think once or so in my videos, maybe last year. Um, they came out with new boxes and things like that. It's a pretty new product. But the really cool thing is, so I work with Walnut Creek Foods a lot. They're a big wholesaler for Superb Lids. Superb Lids are made in Sugar Creek, Ohio, right where I was born and even lived for a number of years. And it's just kind of cool that they're actually made up there in Holmes County and everything. Um, they have the wide mouth and they also have a regular mouth lid. So this is what the outside of the lid looks like a blue seal around the back there's you know just a little bit of a 
flex in the top and I know sometimes it can be hard to find canning lids so if you're needing some I will have them linked below I definitely think it's you know a great product and something that you can get they're in inexpensive they're designed to prevent buckling safe for high pressure canning FDA compliant BPA free and they have more sealing power they have five layers of corrosion protection and more vacuum and has the popping sound that ensures the seal but definitely go check it out in the description box you can also order them on wallandcreekcheese.com and you can use my discount code lynette uh, for 10 percent off your online order so that'd be a great way especially if you don't have them you know near you or something you can order them online so great resource just wanted to put that out there and to thank superb and Walnut creek foods for sponsoring today's video I grew up doing water bath method. That is what my mom always did. Uh, my grandparents, just generations have done it this way and that's the way I was used to doing it. Um, but I just wanted to put this little disclaimer out there. I am not an expert. I do whatever you feel comfortable with. Do your own research. In other words, I am comfortable with what I am doing. I am also trying out a pressure canner for the first time. I know that there are definitely some things that have changed over the years and I am going to be doing some green beans. So you might be wondering why I'm doing more apples. Um, my grandma told me that she puts them through the blender more, more recently and I decided to give it a try and I'm hooked on it, you guys. So you do have to core them, like take the seeds out and the stems and everything. Otherwise, it's done the same. You don't have to peel them or anything. As long as you have a good high quality blender like a Ninja or you know Vitamix, something like that, you can cook them and put them in the blender and that's it. I, I am sold. And we grew up eating applesauce that is frozen. I like it slushy. And so this batch I put in freezer like pint containers and it was the easiest thing. I'm totally gonna be doing this, especially since I can only do like little batches at a time. So try this if you haven't. I'm sure the nutrients are better as well because you don't take the skin off or anything and it's all just blended up. You can see a little flex, but it's really not bad at all. So highly recommend this. So as I mentioned, I'm doing some green beans and I got my kids involved a little bit. That always helps. I'm not an expert when it comes to canning green beans and I've always done them with a the water bath method but this time I'm doing it with the pressure canner so I was trying to research things and hopefully uh, do it right but you definitely want to make sure you pack your green beans in there pretty good and then also uh, once you put your boiling water in there you're going to want to kind of like debubble it to let the bubbles out of the water in the jar. There's um, a channel I found on YouTube that is actually really helpful and I'll try to link her down below. You can go ahead and watch her for a lot of information but um, that's something that I was doing when I was you know trying to get information on things. This is my first time using a pressure canner. I tried it twice the other day without any food in it, just to kind of familiarize myself. And I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and things like that, so don't ask me for a tutorial though. I'm gonna leave that to the pros. So I'm just kind of dabbling in it a little bit because I know there's a lot more things you can can if you have a pressure canner. So we're gonna start with green beans and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> It is harder, I think, to regulate with an electric stove, but that's pretty much all we have here in Florida because there's no natural gas. Unfortunately, I miss my gas stove so much. Um, so it's harder to control electric versus gas because it doesn't immediately, you know, calm down or pick up. So we're gonna try.
So I decided to make some marinara and this is a really, really good recipe. My only problem is I got it from the Food From The Heart cookbook and I decided to stick to the recipe because I know that things like this can, can matter, especially in canning. So unfortunately, I am not able to link the recipe for you guys, but I love this cookbook and I would highly recommend it to you guys if you're looking for a good cookbook. Um, this marinara sauce is really good and honestly it could double as a pizza sauce and even like a pasta sauce in my opinion, but if you do want a can marinara, you could probably find some other recipes online or something. So I'll have her cookbook linked below at least in case you are interested in it. Next thing I'm making is grape pie filling. And I had showed this last year, but I'll show you quickly here. It's very easy to make. I have the recipe in the description box. This is something we enjoy eating. So my only tip would be when you're thickening this, make sure you don't have instant clear gel. You could use Fridgex, you could use Permaflow, but it has to be the cook type. And just mix it with a little bit of water uh, before you put it in your liquid. Otherwise, it's just gonna get lumpy. Believe me, this happened to me. So I put this in jars and it was hot, so I decided to have my water boiling when I put the jars in the water bath canner. That way it's all kind of the same temperature. So then I bring it back to a boil and let it cook for around 20 minutes. Then with my electric stove, I just turned off my burner and set it right beside that burner and kind of let it sit in there for maybe, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. That way it could kind of gradually cool down just a little bit. And even as I was getting them out of the water, the jars were already sealing. So I'm excited to have some more in the cupboard. I have one more thing that I'm gonna show you. This is not canning related, but I was making this tapioca while I was doing my grape pie filling. This is something that's common in our culture, I feel like, even though I've never made it myself, but it turned out really good. I will leave the recipe for you down below and it's really good. You could definitely try different things in this tapioca. The base is the same, and then you can just add kind of whatever you want to customize it, but it was just a really good dessert, and my family enjoyed it. Say hi. So this is gonna conclude the end of the video. Pretty proud of my stuff that I have put away, even though they're just small amounts. And hopefully this gives you guys some motivation and just the ability to maybe try it. And it doesn't have to be a huge amount. It doesn't have to be intimidating. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out the description box for Superb Lids and also Walnut Creek Foods. I'll put that stuff in the description box. And if you order them through the Walnut Creek Cheese website, it's www.walnutcreekcheese.com. And then you can order the, those lids on there and use my code Lynette for 10% off your online order. 
That code will not work in stores, however, um, but it is kind of an incentive for those of you who are not able to get to the stores personally. So I'll leave that all down below, but uh, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and may you all be blessed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.